Hey everyone, gonna take you back to the past. Well, I pretty much do that in every video, but uh, this time um, I'm gonna be going back to an adventure game which has surprisingly been forgotten. I played this game kind of when it came out or not long after it came out, I think, around the year 2000. And um, yeah, it's just kind of been lost to time. Uh, so just a little bit of history. A lot of you will know AGS, Adventure Game Studio, which um, still is kind of the predominant uh, engine for making your own adventure games. Like most people who want to make an adventure game in the style of a Sierra or LucasArts adventure game today will probably use AGS for it. There are other ways to do it, um, but AGS has been sort of the predominant way to do so for like 20 years now. Uh, and this was one of the first popular AGS games. This was kind of one of the games that really put AGS on the map, I think, and that's why it's surprising that it's just kind of, it, it was fairly popular when it came out, I think, but it's just kind of, uh, it's, it's like, most people don't remember it today, so let's go ahead and get started. It's, uh, it's called, well, let's see, let's take a look at what we have here for files. So, um, and in case it's not obvious, well, I mean, it's, I guess it's fairly obvious, I'm doing this in DOS, or in, in DOS box, so, um, um, AGS is obviously known today as a Windows program. You'd use it today to, it runs in Windows and you'd use it to generate a Windows executable. But when it first came out, at the very beginning, AGS was actually, um, it, it made DOS programs. You, it would make DOS games that you'd run in DOS. And this game is so old, it's actually, it's, it's, uh, it's an actual DOS AGS game. Um, I'm using DOSBox Down for this. I know I talk about DOSBox Down a lot. Uh, usually I use it for its save state capabilities, but in this case I'm using it because it, um, it, regular DOSBox has a problem with AGS games, which I'll talk about a little bit later, hopefully if I don't forget. Let's see, what do we have here? So we have a file ID dot dis. All right, so yeah, so that's the, the name of the game. It's called Larry Vale's Traffic Division. This is version 3.0 of the game. Let's see, do we have... Uh, I don't know if I have a... Oh, boy. I don't know if I have a way to... Uh, let's see, do I have... Oh, I do have edit here. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to just... Again, I'm not going to dwell too long on any of this. Yeah, the game's from 2000. So this is um, bug reports and stuff like this. Um, oh, do I have, uh, hold on, do I have the option for text wrap so that, yes, here we go, word wrap. Uh, I turned on word wrap, but it does not wrap. It does not actually wrap the words. That's annoying. Um, well, I am very unhappy about that. Um, is there something I'm missing or does it just not have the option to do that? Uh, display. Well, okay, I guess um, All right. Oh, and here's the uh, here's the music from the game. Oh, this is actually good because oh, I didn't even realize this is listed in the. Uh, <laughs> I did not realize this this is actually listed here because I was going to say the the music ha the the game has actually some pretty nice music, uh, but a lot of these uh, I didn't recognize. Well, I guess I never looked in this file. Now we know what the songs are. Okay, good to know because otherwise. <laughs> I was going to say, if anybody knows what these songs are, let me know, because I recognize a couple of these, but not all of them. But, uh, well, that answers that question, doesn't it? And yeah, there there was a sequel released called Larry Vale's 2, Dead Girls Are Easy. Um, I know the developer was working on a third game, but I don't think it ever finished. I know that for a long time he was saying, yeah, I'm working on Larry Vale's 3, and that was more than 10 years ago, but I don't think the game ever came out. Anyway, okay, enough talk. Let's go ahead and get out of here and um, run the game. Act 7, the blade run like heck. Yeah, the voice obviously deliberately misreads the, the title cards there. Commissioner, I have bad news. Of course you do. Just once I'd like to see a scene in which the mad scientist bursts through the door. 
to say something reassuring. Would that really be so difficult, Professor? Commissioner, please. Every day you bust into my office and say, Bad news this. Bad news that. Another officer shot himself in the leg. Why can't you just come in once and tell me you've discovered the cure for cancer? Dot, 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 dot. Um, I've discovered the cure for cancer. Fantastic! Tell me all about it. The new lovely Rita 4200 Parking Enforcement Cyborg I've been testing has gone berserk. She is disassembling a double parked taxi driver as we speak. Dot, dot, dot. That doesn't sound much like a cure for cancer. Sigh. It's not. In fact, the lovely Rita 4200 Parking Enforcement Cyborg is a cancer itself. Upon violators of even the most superficial traffic regulations. How so? Well, for example, this morning you parked your car awkwardly out in the lot. The lovely Rita 4200 Parking Enforcement Cyborg saw a just cause for punishment. I can understand that. So she burned down your house. Oh, flatulence. So, what do we do now? She's been repeatedly spotted near the maintenance shed of the Jolly Parasite Motor Estates. It may have crafted a home in there. If we can send somebody out to trap it, we'll be able to wait out its battery life. Sounds like a dangerous mission. It is. Success in... in unlikely, but it's worth a try. I suggest sending out a member of the Canine Patrol as bait. The Canine Patrol? Are you crazy? Mr. Barkwolf is too valuable to this squad. Send out a traffic patrolman. You don't mean Officer Vales, do you? You might as well send a pudding. I do mean Vales. I know he's inept, but he'll make the perfect bait. And besides, we'll assign him a more qualified partner. You mean his sideburns aren't enough? Ha ha ha. Ho ho ho. Tee hee. Snort. No, but seriously, what sort of wacky sidekick are you considering? How about a talking monkey? It's been done. Quite masterfully, might I add. A dead guy who gooses people? He retired last April. Right. Webster? What about a handsome, egocentrical, suave, lounge lizard type? Does he surf? Only on weekdays. With a team such as this, I smell a major success for... Larry Vale's Traffic Division, a Pitchfork production by Philip J. Reed, VSC. I don't know if VSC is an actual title. Anyway, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> there are, you might have seen it, there are, there are a few 42 references in this game. I think the game goes a little, little overboard with 42 references. You can see the maximum score is 42, and also our eponymous character's badge number is, is also 42. So yeah, um, it's it's a point-and-click adventure game uh, with, you know, I think this is actually the stock AGS icon bar. The developer didn't bother to really customize the icon bar much. But um, yeah, it works just like a point-and-click adventure game. Now, um, you can't go off in this direction. Uh, and for whatever reason, you can't walk outside of the pedestrian area here. I guess because we're pedestrian. We can go over here to the parking area. But there's really nothing to be achieved by doing so here. Uh, and by the way, that's the reason why I'm playing this in Down. So if you play AGS games like this in stock DOSBox, screen transitions like that take a very long... It takes like 20 seconds to walk from one screen to the other, and that just gets really annoying. This, uh, it, it doesn't... DOSBox Down doesn't have that problem, that's why I'm playing in Down. Um, so yeah, that's the reason for that. Also, this game's audio is really, 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 really quiet. Uh, normally when you make Let's Plays, you need to turn the, the game audio way down. I usually play with game audio at something like 2% of maximum volume, uh, because otherwise it will just completely drown out my voice. This game is totally the opposite. The audio in this game is so quiet, I actually had to boost the game's audio and turn down the microphone audio to kind of balance them out a bit, so it's kind of unusual. Uh, and also, apologies if my voice sounds a bit strange. I'm a little bit sick today. I'm not like, very sick, but I, I have a bit of a cold, so I uh, my voice might be a bit more nasally than usual. I apologize 
for that. I could have waited to make the video, but I was just so excited to... I, I am excited! I was just so excited to make a video about Larry Vales when the, when the idea occurred to me that I didn't want to wait. I don't think there's anything we can do here. We can't... Um, so, the joke here is, I guess, all these vehicles are parked wrongly in some way. Like, this vehicle is... Uh, uh, parked in a handicapped spot even though it's obviously not a handicapped person. It must be her fault Larry Flint couldn't stop by to distrib distribute complimentary copies of Hustler to the guests. Uh, uh, Larry Flint obviously being a guy in a wheelchair. Yep, that's a handicapped parking space. And judging by the pair of skis in the back seat, you don't believe this is a handicapped driver. So yeah, this is a person parked in a handicapped spot. This is obviously a double park. Most of these cars are, are double parked. So this would be like a paradise for traffic cops. This would be like a place where you could ticket every single car, but we can't actually get out there because we can't step off this sidewalk that we're on. And on the other side there, like I showed you, you can step into the yellow pedestrian area, but you can't actually walk from there over here to get to these cars. There's, there's no way to get to these cars, but... Let's see. It's a, it's a Dodge Vipon. I love you, Norm MacDonald. Oh, Norm, Norm MacDonald actually recently passed away, I think just a few months ago. I didn't even know he was sick. Drive a Dodge Vipon and marvel at how much, you're, how much less your tiny penis matters to the opposite sex. What if it's a woman driving it? Well, I guess women don't have very large penises either, but... Um, space 12 and 13, there's a large, obtrusive, rusted old van. We've, the, the, this car is known to the public as Incontinent Sardine. Let's see. A very nice car, Mercedes. A Mercedes Benz, do you think it's called? License plate reads Sandy. It's... License plate has fallen off. Okay, so these three cars are double parked. This is a car without a license plate, and this car is in a handicapped spot. But we can't do anything with them here. We can't reach it from where you are, and yeah, we can't get to them from here, unfortunately. It's all just kind of a distraction. So... I think this is supposed to say wrenches, not wenches. <laughs> I, I can think of a few things to do with a lot of wenches in the back. Um, sorry, I, I, I know I'm being very I'm being very immature today, and my, my apologies. Uh, but the, it, it kind of fits with the game. Notice the uh, the hand cursor appears to be giving us um, uh, digital communication. It's uh, it appears to be extending the yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Go, go, traffic cop arms! Actually, you have no way of ever, ever, no way of ever entering this vehicle. And yes, the, that does include the back seat. No oh, thanks, Berlin speaking terms. All right, yeah. So this this screen is just like a joke. There's nothing we can do here. And actually, there's not much we can do here either, except just walk inside. We can take a look around. There's a crosswalk. So there's the plumber's helper or the traffic fuzz. The plumber's helper of the traffic fuzz. Through average sewer. You can tell it's your average sewer because all the local overachieving sewers have gone away to college. Go Vassar! Alright. Um, one thing you might notice, if you can hear... I don't know how clearly you can hear the music. I tried to boost the music to make it a little more audible, but I think it's still fairly quiet. Um, sometimes when you're walking around, for some reason the music does glitch a bit. Like it will... the, the music will kind of hang for just a, a, a second or a fraction of a second. Uh, I don't know. There, there's some weird timing issues with AGS games in, in DOS, but uh, that is normal as far as I know. Am I trying to lose a Ninja Turtle? No. I just wanted to... Besides, Donatello doesn't swing that way. Well, well, what about the other ones? What about Michelangelo? Or All right. Um, <coughs> uh, I was just actually trying to see if I could get this green stuff in front of it. That's probably just like a plant or something, but... Hello, sewer. I'm an idiot. Oh, there's no response. All right. You know, we're trying to tell you something. All right. If ever a parasite were said to be jolly, he turned it. Admittance into the Guinness Book of Records for most ironic feat by a traffic officer by leeching off the parasite. <laughs> but, but you have a city to rescue. Can I do anything with the crosswalk? No. All right. I think there's something else to do here. We can we can only go inside. So again, this is just like a useless room. All right. 
here we go. Okay, now we're finally inside the, the hotel, so we can take a look around. Um... What do we have here? It's the hotel message board. Closely examining the manufacturer's label, you discover it was produced by Quartet out of Skokie, Illinois. Just a reminder to our guests, it is not okay to take a shih tzu in the jacuzzi. Lol. The gentleman who recently stuffed his smoke detector full of dry grass and set fire to it to frighten his wife has been apprehended. Let's not have this happen again, please. Our maids use one of the finest gourmet candy pieces when they make your bed, so show some respect and eat the darn thing rather than wake up with an adhesed to the side of your head. Notice, well, whomever has... Actually, that should be whoever, because this person here is the the actor and not the not the object of the sentence. We're well, charging batteries to the receptacle and the maintenance shed. Please cease. The higher our bills, the less we can afford to operate our prized shower spy cams. Can I take any of the things? You have no need for these notices, and you have nothing to post up there yourself. Talk about antisocial. Boy. All right. What else do we have here? We have the reception sign... Sign says reception, yeah. Boy, Larry, everybody's getting married but you. You reach up to greet wooden placard with a hearty handshake, but it does not return your greeting. It must be above you. Ha! Above you, get it? Okay, okay, so it wasn't that funny. Cut us a break. We can't all we can't all be Jar Jar Binks. Yes, that thank goodness for that. It's beautiful Sandy's somewhat less attractive telephone. By the look of boredom on her face, it hasn't been ringing much today. If only your roommate would be rude to use hers. Look at all those one hundred big buns numbers stuff to go in your own bill. No, that's no fun. Well, it is, but I don't want to pay. For, okay. Look at the tip. Look at this tip. So for so far, seventy-two cents reside in this container, which means she already makes more than a traffic officer. Can I take the seventy-two cents? Don't take her tips. You're here to represent the city's finest. All right. It's a door labeled to employees only. And no arguing that you are in fact an employee, just not if this hotel will not get you through the door. It has no capacity for your lousy informal logic. That's not informal logic, that is formal logic. It is true that I am an employee, therefore I should be able to walk through the door. That's not informal logic, that's factual information. If the door allowed knock and get a confused look at a sandy. You can talk to her over the desk, there's no need to reason to go back there yourself. Okay, at least no legal reason. All right, I'm just looking at all the stuff here, but I mean, all this stuff is just kind of window dressing. I mean, the, the only thing that really can interact with here is uh, is the woman. She's a very attractive woman. Boy, can that fill wield a mouse. Can we use the, the f <laughs> finger? Sorry, partner, this ain't Larry Vale's female body inspector. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I wish the casino were open. I could sure use a drink. Ahem. <clears throat> Hi there. Can I do anything for you? Why, yes, you can. Within the bounds of legality and morality. Oh. Uh, let me think for a second. Uh, how's business today? Pretty slow. I have nothing to do. I've amused myself in all the conventional ways. Solitaire. Knitting. Juggling. Cattle roping. Elbow practice. The underwater mecha. I, I don't think. Oh, well, completely naked, mind you. I don't even my clothes back on because it got a little chilly in here. But I'm sorry. Did you have a question? Uh, yes. Where is the thermostat? <laughs> um, I don't think those are, those are the usual ways to entertain yourself. See any sus sus suspicious. I know I keep picking on, on typos. I shouldn't do that. Suspe okay, S seen any suspicious characters lately? Just one. Was this person made of aluminum? I don't know. Are you? Odd. Uh, usually I'm the straight man. Where is the maintenance shed? Head through the pool room. It's beyond the area outside. Is it locked? No, we keep it wide open and fully accessible. That way, any passing thief will have unhindered access to our most expensive machinery. Oh, great. That makes it very easy for this mission to... I was being sarcastic. And I was being comfortably ignorant. Duh. So how would I get in? The maintenance men have keys. Other than that, no, other than them, no legal way. That's fine. As an officer of traffic, I am the law. Comfortably ignorant again, eh? Sometimes it's not even a choice. I'm going to be so lonely alone in my big room. No, you won't. Your partner got here hours ago. 
Oh yeah, him, but I meant... He seems like a fun guy. He even brought along his travel Yahtzee. No, you see, you won't be lonely one bit. There's plenty of stuff to keep you two occupied. I really want to spend time with you instead. Well, you're up to dinner with your partner? Nah, I'd just be a third wheel. Yes, serious problems indeed. All right, so also not much to really gain from conversation with this woman other than just some filler details. Uh, and you thought your old girlfriend was hideous. This regular is being leased from the local vomitorium. The carpeting equivalent of butt cheese. <laughs> This game is sponsored by butt cheese. Buy it, buy it by the brick or in new individual slices. Car cover is louder than you could ever hope to be. As this, see, there are some funny jokes in this game. This is the lobby of the Jolly Parasite Motor Estates, a fine establishment with, which flaunts all the modern frills, from carpeting to mattress to a full granite wallpaper. T tre bueno. Oh, wait. Tre bueno. Yes. French and Spanish. Okay, uh, let's see, what do we have? Let's explore this uh, hotel a little bit. So we have three doors here. This is room 101, reserved for a frequent guest of the hotel known as Big Brother. That is, of course, a reference to 1984. While deprogramming sounds like fun, it's only fair to Winston's privacy that you let him enjoy it in private. That is still a further continuation of references to 1984. Hey, Winston, if you can hear me, we're at war with East Asia. We've always been at war with East Asia. No reply. Oh, that was me. That was Larry Vale speaking. No reply. He must be enjoying the chocolate rations Big Brother gener graciously raised. All right. What do we have here? The doors labeled as the janitorial supply closet. You doubt very much that this is the place the teddy bears have their picnic. It's locked. These janitors don't want their plumber and a jug walking out of here with any of the guests. Janitorial supply closet. How do I love thee? Let me count the stains. Alright. I guess we can't get in there because this isn't Space Quest, obviously. Warning was staying in room 124. You press your eye up to the peephole and squint as best you can, only to find a creepy, terrible man looking back at you. What a silly place to put a mirror. So it might not be very polite to go barging in people's rooms without being invited, especially when the door is locked. Land shark. No reply, since when did people stop falling for that? All right, I don't think we can get into any of these rooms either. <laughs> not not having very much success at the at the beginning here, all these places that we can't get into and things that we can't really interact with. All right, what do we have here? This looks like a... I use my powerful logical deduction powers to deduce that this might be the pool room. Um, okay, so, let's see, let's look at the pool. It's the hotel swimming pool, a nice one, really, as long as you manage to j take your swim prior to the 11 a.m. local Elder's Hydroponic Jazzercise Jamboree. All right. Can we take a swim? No time for swimming, Larry. You've got a dinner, a dinner date with the Reaper. You submerge your head in the water and shout to the Snorks, Hey, your show stunk! All right, let's see, what do we have here? Can't make heads or tails of the strange pool drain mechanism. There's a button and a keyhole and everything. You to repeat it. The control, control panel of the pool appears to drain. The keyhole chortles at your futile struggling. I guess I need a key. All right. Um, a slenderly challenged man naps in the doorway, blocking the only path to your point of death at the steely hand of the lovely Rita 4200 parking enforcement cyborg. Rats. You put all your weight against him, but even 70 pounds of pressure won't budge him. Hey, wake up. You're obstructing justice. Is that message going to clear, or do I need to... Okay. Apparently, for some reason, for once, I need to click to clear the... Even in his sleep, he giggles to hear this coming from a traffic patrolman. All right, come on. Hey, what do I have in my inventory? Do I have... Oh, hey, I've got four things. What do we have? Is your identification? Intimates at black-hearted jaywalkers countywide. Uh, is there a nightstick? Just perfect for scratching those hard-to-reach areas. Bang, bang, shoot, shoot. Make their next double park their last. <laughs> yes, always, a, always an appropriate reaction to someone double parking their car. And the key to your room. The tag reads 142. I'm going to guess that's 
well, it's, it's a, another 42 reference, but it's also the, pro presumably the number of our room. Can we use the nightstick to prod this guy out of the way? Okay, the solution to this puzzle may require logic, but not caveman logic. All right, well, then let's go a little more high tech here. Cavemen didn't have uh, pistols, did they? Now you're thinking of that other game, Bernie Goetz Traffic Division. Who is Bernie Goetz? I do not know who Bernie Goetz is. Let me... Let me... Just out of curiosity... Bernie Goetz... Okay, known as the Subway Vigilante. Shot four young men on a New York City subway train after they allegedly tried to rob him. Okay, so this is like George Zimmerman before George Zimmerman became a thing. All right, fair enough. All right. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess we need a little bit more subtle thinking to get this guy out of the way. What do we have here? It's the pool skimmer. Something this would come in really handy for you if a traffic patrolman in the afforded you something closer to a swimming pool than a, space bu a speckle bucket full of rainwater. I don't know what a speckle bucket is either, but anyway. If you to the pool camera, you can feel the chilly gaze of the lifeguard upon you, which quite clearly tells you that obtrus obtrusive thievery just ain't cool. That person calmly reads S.S. Minnow. You chuckle quietly to yourself like, like so many giddy foreign tourists before you. S.S. Minnow. S.S. S me now? I don't I don't get the joke. If anyone understands the joke, please explain. The lifeguard shoots you with a glance that says he'll be shooting you with a lot more if you don't get your hands off his TV land memorabilia. You can only assume that includes his precious Green Acres boxer shorts, his Sanford and Sun salt and pepper shakers, and his welcome back Carter novelty Afro comb. Alright, perhaps that is in fact true. If this man wasn't born to be a lifeguard, he's got the chiseled physique, the bleached blonde hair, the Baywatch in red trunks, and most importantly, the sure I'm not sleeping tinted sunglasses. When he runs you to rub lotion all over his back, he'll tell you to rub lotion all over his back. Hey, I think that guy over there needs your help. In reply, he's as good at shirking his he's as good at as he's as good at shirking his duties as you are. You'll have to take care of that man yourself. Ah, uh, but the game won't let me use caveman logic. Alright, I think we need to come back here later. Lifeguard chair, product placement courtesy for lifeguard chair is limited. Let go your limited tell me. Okay, all right. I think <laughs> something tells you the lifeguard won't be amused by your playful attempts to wobble the chair beneath him. <laughs> something also tells you it's not worth the fat lip. Well, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to rouse you into action and trying to rouse you to actually do your job and get this gentleman out of the doorway so we can walk through the door. All right, we'll have to come back this way later. Let's go ahead and. Uh, Let's go ahead and uh, check out what we have here. So, what do we have here? Somebody else's hotel room. Some people are more, more likely to survive their stay at the Jolly Parasite than you are. This is room 142. Oh, this is our room. And this is room 169. We'll get to explore this room in much more detail. Larry Vale's Lust for Vice. It's the currently locked double door which leads to the crumbling dice. The hotel's casino won't open until later today. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't realize there were more. Fortunately, though, the Jolly Parasite offers its service to anybody who may have the urge to stick their money into slot machines during non-casino hours. Their toilets operate 24 hours a day. But dum dum for more jokes about compulsive gambling, either play Larry Vales, You Bet Your Wife, or visit your local library. You can't get any legal robbery, can only take place during business hours. Alright, so I'm guessing we can't get through this door. There must be enough sideburns in the room already. Or this door. Can't get unless you say the password. And you can't see the password without your mother suddenly appearing to wash your mouth, mouth out with soap. Alright. I guess we'll go into our room. That's got to be this room here, but we'll do that next time. I'll go ahead and uh, let's actually sportingly save the game here. 
outside our room. I would like to rent a room. And, uh, yeah, that'll be the first video of Larry Vale's uh, Traffic Division. I will see you folks and talk to you folks later in the next video. Until then, ta-ta.